Ladies and gentlemen, the American German Bulldog Nation, welcome to the Eric Dieter Show. As always, we're sponsored by Dieter's Legal Consulting. And what Dieter's Legal Consulting actually does is we do legal strategies and financing in legal matters. And I'm pretty damn good at it. Also sponsored by Park Yoga. Check us out on all of our platforms. And the top story is incredible. James Comer is alleging that there is a large UK, Ukraine bribe to Joe Biden. Uh, they have apparently made a deal where everybody's going to get to look at the document without holding Ray in contempt. But I want you to, I want to read something to you that summarizes what allegedly went down. It all makes sense. Yes, it is Ukraine, Comer told uh, the Just News. This Form 1023 involves a business person from Ukraine who allegedly sent a bribe, a substantial bribe, to then Vice President Joe Biden. The Biden family frequently visited Ukraine for its respective business. Then Vice President Joe Biden served as the Obama administration's Ukrainian's point person on U.S. foreign policy. He visited Ukraine six times as vice president. Hunter Biden joined the board of Ukrainian energy company Burisma in April 2014, two years before Joe Biden stated he forced the firing of Ukraine prosecutor Viktor Shogun, who investigated the company. Let's think about that. Joe Biden makes that threat while his son is on the board of that company. Joe Biden approved an official statement about Hunter's Burisma board positions email show. Despite Hunter's lack of experience in Ukraine or the energy sector, he earned $83,000 per month from the energy company or $1 million per year. While his son was a member of Burisma's board, Joe Biden threatened to withhold $1 billion from Ukraine if the Ukrainian government did not fire the prosecutor investigating Burisma. In 2017, Hunter's salary was cut in half when Joe Biden left the White House. According to former White House stenographer Mike McCormick, Joe Biden allegedly promoted U.S. support for Ukraine's natural gas industry only days after Hunter Biden joined Burisma's board. He's a damn crook. He's a damn crook. All right, New York wildfire and smoke. It's hitting the east. New York City looked like some toxic orange uh, post-apocalypse movie. And guess what, folks? Apparently, part of the problem with Canada is the same damn problem that happened in Florida. I mean, excuse me, California with their fires. Bad forest policies not cleaning out the underbrush, taking care of things. See, these so-called eco-friendly states and governments screw up. That's the bottom line. House Freedom Caucus blocked physically House business uh, in protest of what was going on relative to the uh, Congress and the deal that was made on the budget and the debt ceiling. Do you know who wasn't part of that House Freedom Caucus Protest, one of their own, Thomas Massey. By the way, the lead story in local news involves Thomas Massey. In Hollywood, James Wood says people are leaving Hollywood because he goes, it is worse than what we could ever dream about. Dean Cain's leaving, you know, Superman. Uh, Mark Wahlberg went to Las Vegas. He wants to make movies in Vegas. Good old Hollywood. What really goes on? RFK Jr. went down the border and gave a report. I just think about that. Kamala doesn't go. Joe doesn't go. RFK Jr. goes. It's unbelievable. He says he finds in these hospitals pregnant uh, illegal immigrants who are getting priority care over Americans. CNN finally got rid of Chris Licht. He's out. This is the day after he said he was going to do better. Trump allegedly was given a letter that he was the target. He's already known that he's been the target uh, relative to these documents issue down in South Florida. It, it truly blows my mind, you know, the double standards relative. And by the way, they can indict him for that. 
It's not going to affect his poll numbers at all. In fact, they'll go up some even more. The Pentagon denies the whistleblowers' allegations about them having UFO parts that they've retrieved. Who do you believe? I believe the whistleblower. You believe anything of our, go our government does anymore? Everybody said that there was a, a crisis in government after Watergate. Are you kidding me? Watergate is nothing compared to what we deal with day in and day out. The government is corrupt as hell. Our government, the United States government, top to bottom, is corrupt as hell, led by our president and his Justice Department. Biden vetoed the $400 billion student loan plan, which is basically, hey, you got to start paying your loans back again. He vetoed it. Oh, well. 80 million people have watched Tucker Carlson's little Twitter show. 80 million. I think three or four million watched him on Fox News. And that's something else. 80 million. Got two things I want to talk to you about in, in history. Today in history, James Earl Ray on June 8th, 1968, was arrested for the, the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And this is wild. On this day in history, June 8th, 1949, George Orwell published 1984. George Orwell called today from 1949. It's amazing. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. Coming up next, Eric Dieters, local news. <music> Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, welcome to Eric Dieters' local news. We're sponsored by Dieters Legal Consulting, Legal Strategies and Financing, Parks Yoga, and check us out on all of our platforms. Well, our lead story is involving me, possibly running against this guy. I announced yesterday that I've all but decided I haven't made my final decision, but I am probably going to challenge him in the Republican primary next year for Congress. That would be in May of next year. And here's the reason why. Thomas Massey's recent votes have clearly shown that he's not really part of the Freedom Caucus. The guy finally got bought by Kevin McCarthy and the Republican establishment. Didn't take long, they finally bought him. And his votes recently are completely out of step with all of his prior principles. Number two, he never speaks up, out, or against, or challenges Mitch McConnell. And we all know how we feel about Mitch McConnell. Number three, he endorsed Ron DeSantis. Number four, he is the leader of some of the meanest, nastiest, just disgusting political people there are. And he's their leader. And I've exposed them. And I'm going to keep exposing them. So I am very seriously contemplating, and I am probably going to challenge him. And I will also obviously seek the Trump endorsement. But the bottom line is, is that I want to serve. The only way we change things is people like you and I step up to the plate and run against people like this. Bottom line, it, 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 politicians are unbelievable. They just are. They're just all unbelievable. And long crime. I want to just dog this guy right here. Uh, he's gotten all the publicity, got the movie, the book, Dark Waters and everything else. You know who he works for? Taft Law. Do you know who represents Dr. Durrani and is fighting these victims in court, Taft Law. I crack up. He gets all of this publicity. He gets, this is wild. It just goes to show you how if, if it's DuPont, which doesn't own the local news, versus the hospitals who own the local news, the difference in the publicity of a cause that gets. But the law firm that uh, Bob Delot is from is... But a lot from is Taft Law, who is uh, fighting the Durrani victims. <laughs> Taft Law is no hero. He might be a hero, but Taft Law's no hero. And the publicity that they've gotten on this, the the the, the Durrani victims' cause is about a twenty times better story than Dark Waters. Twenty times gets no publicity. Jeff Pastor pled guilty yesterday in front of a federal judge. Sentencing's delayed. He's looking at a couple years. Judge McFarland will sentence him soon. This was in the public corruption charge. He was a Cincinnati council member. The Covington Gropers on the loose. There he is. 
There's been no arrest. He's apparently groped a couple women. He gropes and leaves them. He's on the loose, the Covington group groper. Melissa Powers spoke out about the crime going on and all the shootings in Hamilton County. She's the Hamilton County prosecutor, and she makes a really, really good point. She says judges keep the community safe. What the judges are doing, Melissa Powers' office and her assistants can try all that they want to put people in jail, but if the judges let them out on bail, let them out on no bail, release them constantly, they don't, doesn't do anything. It's not Melissa Powers' fault. It's the judge's fault. In local news, Homer Ramos begins this weekend at Martin's Gate in Newport. Go check it out. Taylor Swift's concert, June 30th and July 1st, uh, here in Cincinnati. I just bring this up because apparently all the hotels are already being sold out. Air quality alert, all coming from the wildfires in Canada. I think we already, yesterday, I thought we had pretty good air quality. Independence, uh, my hometown, approved Greg Bridges' project for 52 townhome, townhomes over in the Beach Grove area. Good for Greg. Keep building houses. In Kentucky, Mammoth Cave. There is a bill that's being sponsored by Guthrie, the Western Kentucky Congressman, and Mitch McConnell to add nearly 1,000 acres above ground, which would be covered uh, below ground, to the Mammoth Cave system. Sounds good to me. Old National Bank in Louisville, where the shooting is going to move their offices from that uh, building. I can't imagine. I mean, how do you go in and work in a place where there was a mass shooting? It'd be, it'd be weird. This is really odd. The place in Kentucky that has the most food stamps happens to be Bowling Green. Oh, that was, I, I was predicting Covington or Newport or Louisville, but per capita, it's Bowling Green, most food stamps. Weird to me. In Ohio, Mamadou Diello of Florence, 19, was pulled from the Madison Lakes near Dayton, Ohio. Sad, sad, sad. And then in sports, i tell you right now, my cousin Josh has got me believing in the Reds. The Reds won again against the Dodgers, comeback fashion, walk-off homer by Benson. Uh, their, uh, Ella De La Cruz comes up, has two exciting games back-to-back. I mean, they're an exciting team. McLean, all of them, these young players. You look at the lineup, you never heard of these guys a year ago. And they're, except in, uh, Jonathan Indy. And guess who's sitting on the bench? Joey Votto. I say keep him there. Anyway, this is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. Coming up next, look at him. He got a new pitcher because he didn't like the other one. James Spen Spinley in your World News. Hello again. The top headlines from around the world. A 45-year-old Syrian man is under arrest in France. Children as young as three-year-olds were playing in the park when he suddenly started stabbing the children. The man is in police custody. The FAA has warned travellers to expect flights to be delayed at JFK, LaGuardia and Newark International Airports. Some 800 flights have been reported up to now. Other airports down the East Coast are expecting a ripple effect due to the heavy smoke from the Canadian wildfires. About 300 children have been rescued from an orphanage in Sudan's capital after being trapped there while fighting raised outside. At least 71 other kids died. Well, it happens, seven times Ballon d'Or winner and World Cup winner and probably one of the greatest football players in the world will be playing in the United States next year. Lionel Messi signed for Inter Miami from PSG. And in sports, West Ham United beat Florentino 2-1 last night to become the Europa Conference champions. Until tomorrow, have a fantastic day from Eric and I. Take care.